Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Well, once again, it's Monday night and time for our weekly visit with that excellent host and dean of storytellers, Dr. Watson. I'm sure he's waiting for us in his study, so let's join him, shall we? Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Bell. I see you have the old black tin dispatch box out again, Dr. Watson. You've been refreshing your memory on tonight's new Sherlock Holmes yes, adventure? Yes, boy, and while I was going over my notes on the case, I, I came across this. It played a prominent part in the story that I'm going to tell you. Hmm, it's a platinum cross. Is that some kind of medal, Dr. Watson? It is, Mr. Bell, it is. It's a cross of St. Hilarius, one of the highest decorations of the small European kingdom of Grosnia. Presented to Sherlock Holmes, I suppose. Yes, Mr. Bell, though... Before he was awarded it, the two of us went through one of the strangest and in some ways the most embarrassing experiences of our entire career. I call the story The Adventure of the Innocent Murderess. Sounds exciting. We'll be ready for it in just a moment, Dr. Watson. Men, in summer when you go without your hat, does your hair get dry, wild, and unruly looking? After a swim, does it feel sticky and stringy? Then remember, Cremel Hair Tonic keeps dry, wild, sun-baked hair looking perfectly groomed throughout the hottest, stickiest day, as if your barber had just combed it. You see, Cremel contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. This wonderful, natural-looking hairdressing has just enough light oils to keep hair neatly groomed with an attractive, healthy-looking luster. Yet Cremel never leaves the hair looking or feeling greasy or sticky. It never leaves any unpleasant odor. Cremel always looks and feels clean on both hair and scalp. It leaves the scalp feeling so cool, refreshed, and alive. A recent survey showed Cremel hair tonic was preferred among America's most prosperous and successful men, among top-flight executives who know the importance of handsomely groomed hair. Be sure to try it, men. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel hair tonic. Now, Dr. Watson, how about the new Sherlock Holmes story that you call The Adventure of the Innocent Murderer? Well, Mr. Bell, that strange affair began on a spring afternoon at the turn of the century. It was a beautiful day, and for some hours, Holmes and I had rambled about in the park. In silence, for the most part, as befits two men who know each other intimately. But shortly after five, when we returned to Baker Street, and I remember that as we opened the front door, Mrs. Hudson spoke to us. Excuse me, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Mrs. Hudson, what is it? There's been a gentleman here asking for you, sir. So much for our afternoon walks, Watson. Well, is he gone, Mrs. Hudson? Aye, sir. Didn't you ask him in? I did that, sir. He waited half an hour. A very restless kind of man he was, walking and stamping all the time he was here. Uh, and finally, he ups and out. And all I could say wouldn't hold him back, Mr. Holmes. Oh, you did your best, Mrs. Hudson. But did he leave his name? Oh, no, doctor. But he was a foreigner... I swear I've never seen him here before. He'll be back, I'm sure. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Aye, sir. Were you expecting a clown, Holmes? Had I done so, chap, I would not have spent the past few hours wandering about with you in Regent's Park. Oh, I wonder who he is. He left us one clue to his identity. I don't see any clue. This pipe on the table is not one of yours. Hmm. A nice old briar with a good long stem. Well, can you deduce anything from that? Very little, except for the obvious fact that its owner is left-handed, is a muscular man with an excellent set of teeth, uh, careless in his habits, and uh, with no need to practice economy. Oh, come, 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 Holmes. That's a little far-fetched. On the contrary. But I think that's our client now. Meet him on the stairs, will you, Watson? Yes, yes, indeed. Now we'll have something more interesting than his pipe to study. Uh, this way, sir. So I thank you, Mrs. Hudson. You are Sherlock Holmes. No, my name is Watson, Dr. Watson. Oh, then you must be Mr. Holmes. Since there are only three of us in the room, that would seem an eminently logical conclusion. Please, do not make fun of me. I am bewildered foreigner in your country. Oh, my friend is only joking, sir. Do sit down, won't you, Mr. Mr. My name is Prescott. 
Igor Priskov. And I do not wish to sit down. It pleases me to walk as I talk. It soothes me. And I am in great need of soothment. Master Priskov, I shall be delighted to give you any assistance I can. I'm only sorry that I was out when you were called earlier. I myself was desolated. But I will waste no further time in desolation. Mr. Holmes, you have in the past performed great service to my country. And what is your country, sir, may I ask? The kingdom of Grotznia, my friend. Small in area, but great in tradition. Mr. Holmes, as Igor Priskop says, you have helped us in the past. In uh, a modest way, Mr. Priscop. Though your government was generous enough to award me the uh, Medal of St. Stephen. First class, a high honor. You were also presented with the Medal of St. Arcadu, second class, as well as that of St. Michael and the seven subsidiary angels. Oh, yes, yes, I got one of those. Ah, that one I regret to say is of slight importance. Oh, really? But That's now, Mr. Holmes, I come to you as an emissary of Grotznia and ask you for your greatest service. Hmm. As I recall, Mr. Perskop, my greatest services to Grosnia were under the regime of the People's Party. The party to which I belong. And if our newspapers are accurate, that is the party which is now out of favor. I do seem to remember reading something about that in the Times the other day. I am happy to see that you are both so well informed. Let me now explain this situation to you further, my friends. There is now an international committee of powers meeting at the Hague. They are trying to decide if the royalists rightfully control Grotznia... Or, or if your party does. That is right, Mr. Holmes. In the meanwhile, the Grotznian embassy here in London is dominated by the royalists. Mm, unfortunate for you, I'm sure, but uh, what do you expect my friend to do? He's hardly a politician, you know. I have come to London to make contact with our exiles here. The embassy must not know. No one must know that Igoro Priscop is in London. Mr. Holmes, my very life is in danger. For the sake of my beloved Grotznia, I want you to let me stay here in Baker Street, in secret. That uh, is an unusual request, yes, Mr. Yes, and a completely impractical one, sir. There's very little room here. There's I, room. I, I must insist. You, you, Mr. Holmes, hold the order of St. Stephen first class. You're a friend of my people. Now, now, you, you must help me. You must... <laughs> Lord, he, he's fainted. Very emotional, these foreigners. No, Watson, no. Look at that stain on his shirt. He's been wounded. Obviously, at least one of his enemies knows that he's in London. And that's why he came to us. Oh, it's only a fresh wound in the shoulder. I'll bandage it up. I, see, I have some smelling salts here. That'll bring him round. There we are. Uh, ha- hand me that, that glass, will you? He's sure. coming to of his own accord. Oh. Oh. Here you are, Mr. Priscop. Drink this. Oh, no. No medicine. I do not believe in them. Never mind about that. You try this. Oh, thanks. No. Forgive my display of weakness. Why didn't you tell me that you'd already been attacked, Mr. Priscop? Oh, it is but a scratch. A clumsy attempt from the darkness as I returned here. I did not wish to alarm you over nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Somebody attempts to murder you, you call it nothing. I repeat my request, Mr. Holmes. Will you let me stay here a while? Very well, Mr. Priscop. Since your life is in obvious danger... You may stay here in Baker Street. Da propaspo, Mr. Holmes. I thank you. And let the Tsinaku Orchestra play for the Embassy Ball in Belgrave Square. Here in Baker Street is the true embassy of Grotznia. Gracious me. There are two nice brown eggs facing you, Watson. Why glower at them? Why not get on with your breakfast? Oh, I've got no appetite, Holmes. The whole routine of my life has been turned topsy-turvy since you let that fellow Priscop stay here. It's a pity that this modest flutter of excitement should upset your lives to such an extent. However, it may interest you to know that my brother Mycroft regards our action in sheltering Priscop as a very important one for England. Oh, has Mycroft been here this morning? Yes, before you were up. As you know, Mycroft is the unofficial oracle of our foreign office. He feels that the Groznian royalists are so closely allied to the court of Prussia as to constitute a menace to our country. Good gracious me. However, he also feels that the Committee of Powers at The Hague will rule in favor of the People's Party. If that does happen, the fact that we have helped Priscop will place the foreign office in a very favorable position with the new government. I see. Well, that makes it rather different. I, I think I will tackle those eggs after all. Uh, where is Mr. Priscop now? 
In the next room, conferring with a politi- political friend of his by the name of Carlo Tarfush. Well, I must say they do have extraordinary names. Carlo Tarfush. <laughs> Sounds like a double barrel sneeze. Ah, Mr. Tarfush. Allow me to introduce my friend, Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson, how do you do? How do, you do? How do, you do? And um, how did you find your compatriot? Oh, in splendid spirits and in splendid hands, Mr. Holmes. On behalf of Grosnia, I thank you both for giving him sanctuary. Oh, nothing at all, sir. Nothing at all. Very happy to have been of any assistance. Right. Come in. And I must be leaving, gentlemen. Good day to you. And again, my most sincere thanks. Oh, pardon. It's got a parcel, gents. It's for a Mr. Prispop or something like that. Oh, here you are, young fellow, my lad. I'll take it. No, I want to give it to Mr. Holmes. Lummy. Just wait until I tell me old mum I've talked to the great Sherlock Holmes. She won't half be proud. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. And here's a shilling for your trouble, my boy. Cool, Bob. Thank you, Governor. You better be careful, Holmes. That package is addressed to Priscop. It might be a time bomb, you know. Mm, it's sent from the Wine Traub Importing Company. We'll see if Mr. Priscop ordered any delivery from there. Ah, there you are, Mr. Priscop. This uh, package just came for you. Were you expecting it? Ah, oh, yes. The purpose for Mr. Holmes. It is from the Wine Traub Company. It must be my Vinku. You what? Vinku. Vinku, the wine of my country. Where Vinku. would Grotznia be without Vinku? He distilled the essence and life of whortleberries. No English drink can compare with it. Uh, perhaps you will join me in glass? I think not, thank you. It's a little early in the day. Well, I quite agree with you, Holmes. Then I shall retire to my room alone and sample this Grotznia nectar. I shall see you later, gentlemen. How can he keep a clear head if he starts drinking at this time of the day? I doubt if the essence of whortleberries is too potent. At least uh, to a Grosnian. Well, it's got someone else at the door. We have all the privacy of Paddington Station. Uh, come in. Ah, so. Good morning, young lady. W- what can where I... Where is he? Tell me where he is. First, tell me who you are, please. I am lovely. Lovely Michelso. Where is Priscop? Lead me to him. Mr. Priscop is under my protection. Before you see him, I insist on knowing your business, madam. You are hiding him. But I will find him if I have to search every closet in his house. This door leads to another room. Perhaps he's in there. Come back. Grab her, Watson. Your mistress. Please stop. You betrayed her. You were betrayed. She's insane. She's insane. There. Justice is done. Do with me what you will. Quick, Watson. How's Priscop? He's dead, Holmes. Shot through the chest, another through the arm. The third shot broke the bottle of wine. Justice has been done. Mr. Holmes. Yes, Mr. Tarfus? You must save Lavery. She's my fiancée. She had good reason to think Prisca a traitor. But she shot him down in cold blood, sir. She did it for Grazmia. She committed murder practically under our very eyes. She must pay for it. And Dr. Watson and I will have the greatest pleasure in testifying against her. Until her trial takes place, I have nothing further to say. You seem particularly engrossed at the times this morning, Holmes. I'm reading the report of the trial of Lavery McKelso. Well, I can't see why it's dragging on for so long. We gave our evidence two days ago. The case is perfectly clear. She shot Igoro Priscov or whatever it was before our eyes. She's a murderess. They should hang her. Yes, Sir Francis Jackson, her counsel for the defense, apparently does not share your, your opinion. He's an extremely clever man. After cross-examining the police sergeant yesterday, he... Ask for an adjournment until noon today. On what grounds? He wishes a fresh post-mortem made. The police surgeon had not examined the contents of the stomach of the dead man. Why no should he, Holmes? Priscoff was shot to death. We saw it happen. What's Sir Francis up to? I think I'm beginning to suspect, Watson. And I pray for the sake of my own reputation that I'm wrong. However, it's no use sitting here in Baker Street surmising. Let's go over to the Old Bailey and hear what the post-mortem report discloses. Gentlemen of the jury, 
I will read to you the final paragraph of the Home Analyst Report. <coughs> Sufficient cyanide was found in the stomach of the deceased to have killed three men. <laughs> As you know, cyanide is an almost instantaneous poison. Between this report and the medical evidence you have already heard, there can be no doubt that the deceased Igor Priscop was already dead when the defendant fired the bullet into his body. I therefore instruct you to acquit the defendant. Good heavens, Holmes. You realize this whole case made us look ridiculous? I am well aware of the fact. It's a stigma on our professional reputations. And a stigma that must be removed. Well, look out here. Here comes Carlo Tafush, fiancé of the girl who's just been acqui acquitted. Well, Mr. Tafush... I imagine you're very happy. Oh, of course I am, Mr. Holmes. And I'm marrying Lavery today, as soon as the police release her. Indeed? Yes. And uh, in the meanwhile, I have a commission for you. Find the real murderer of Igoro Priscop. Find him, Mr. Holmes, or you will become the laughing stock of all Europe. <laughs> Just a moment, we'll find out if Sherlock Holmes does find the real murderer of Vigoru Prescott. Men, on hot, sticky summer days, your hair needs extra special care. And when you buy a hair tonic, why not buy one that does lots more than just keep hair looking handsome? Why not get your money's worth and buy Kreml hair tonic? No other hair tonic keeps the hair more neatly groomed and attractive looking. Kreml gives hair such a handsome, clean-cut appearance. It keeps the hair perfectly groomed throughout the hottest, most humid summer day. It never looks or feels greasy or sticky. In addition, Kreml is simply great to lubricate a dry scalp. At the same time, it removes itchy, loose dandruff and leaves the scalp feeling so clean, cool, alive, and tingling. And if your hair is so dry that it breaks off and falls when you comb it, Kreml actually helps condition the hair in that it leaves it feeling so much softer and more pliable. So buy a bottle of Kreml at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barber shop. Use this highly specialized hair tonic daily for better groomed hair, a more hygienic scalp. K-R-E-M-L, Kreml hair tonic. A nationwide favorite among America's most successful men. Well, Dr. Watson, it seems to me that you and the great Sherlock Holmes are in a bad spot. A man poisoned and then shot under your very eyes. Yes, Mr. Bell, but I can assure you that Holmes, as soon as you return to Baker Street from the trial, plunged into a fine frenzy of activity. He was examining the top of the table under his microscope for traces of poison where the bottle of wine had been shattered. You've been hunched over that microscope for hours, Holmes. No results yet? Not as yet. I was just reading the Evening Gazette. There's an interesting article on the Grosnian situation. Oh, what does it say? The committee in The Hague has ruled for the People's Party. And our friend Carlo Tarfush, the one who married the girl Lovely, is to be the new ambassador here in London. Indeed, how very interesting. It goes on to say here that they've established that the dead man, Igoro Priskov, never was a traitor. The poor girl was deceived by false evidence. The villain who deceived her is who fled to Germany. I was right. This stain, beyond question, is that of wine mixed with cyanide. Now to track the history of that bottle. We know that nobody tampered with it after it went from the messenger boy's hands to Priscop's. Therefore... But how are we going to find that boy again? This is a job for my band of street urchins. The Baker Street of regulars. Round them up, Watson. Tell them I'll give a golden sovereign to the boy that brings him to me first. <laughs> Of course, I remember delivering that parcel to you, Mr. Holmes. Did anyone accost you on your way over here to deliver it, Charlie? Yes, Mr. Holmes, they did. A oh, young lady, was it? Yes, it was. How did you know, sir? Describe what happened, Charlie. Well, Mr. Holmes, she spoke to me on the street. Nice and friendly she was. And then she took me in a tea shop and gave me a raspberry tart and a nice big cup of tea. Where did you put the parcel? On the chair beside me. Oh, it's easy to see what happened, Holmes. She switched the, the parcels. Quite. Charlie, was the young lady a foreigner? Yes, Mr. Holmes. She didn't half talk funny like. Look at this photograph. Was that the young lady who you're talking about? That's her, all right, Mr. Holmes. 
Blimey, you know everything, don't you, sir? Not quite, Charlie. Here, here's five shillings for your trouble. And I'll be off with you. Two, five, Bob. Thank you, Governor. So the girl was guilty all the time. But I... I don't see her motive. I do. And we're going at once to the Grosnian Embassy. Remember, she's now the ambassador's lady. I intend to let her know that I do understand. Mr. Holmes, your conversation is very interesting. But surely I do not have to point to an intelligent man like yourself that I've been tried and acquitted of murder. Under your delightful Anglo-Saxon law, double jeopardy, I cannot possibly be tried again. Oh, just the same. You're a murderess. Am I? You were no passionate patriot. You never believed in that forged evidence. You simply killed Igor Prescott because with him out of the way, you knew that your future husband would become the ambassador. In my country, we have a proverb. Inshko na vili greshko lumagin. What on earth does that mean? Ammunition is more persuasive than strategy. Mr. Holmes, you have no ammunition. There is nothing you can do to me. And so, I wish you both good night. <laughs> There must be some way of catching her, Watson. There must. Well, you've been outwitted before, Holmes. People forget it. They don't like to remember your triumphs. To blazes with the people. I must account for this to myself. Hand me that evening paper, will you, Watson? Uh, there you are. Now, where was that article on Grosnier that you read to me earlier? The second page, I think. Ah, here it is. But I have ammunition, Watson. The lady was wrong. What on earth are you burbling about, Holmes? We must draft a telegram to Mr. Tarfush, the new Grosnian ambassador. We'll ask him to hold a party of all the most important Grosnian attaches. There, my dear Watson, amid the bright lights and gay music, I shall have the utmost pleasure in proving to the ambassador's wife that she is far from invulnerable. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. Yes, Mr. Ambassador? The attaches are waiting in the library. You said that you would expose poor Prescott's murderer. Now, why should we wait any longer? I shall be most happy to explain it now. Come on, Watson. Right you are, Holmes. Your wife is in the library, too, Mr. Tarkos? Yes, Mr. Holmes, and she is as curious as I am. Now, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. At my request, Mr. Sherlock Holmes has been trying to find the murderer of poor Igoru Priscott. He tells me that he is now ready to make his report. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, I realize that my revelation will be something of a shock to you all. I have proof beyond doubt that the person who murdered Igoru Priscott by poison is the same person who fired those shots into his already dead body. Your own wife, Mr. Ambassador. But that is ridiculous, Holmes. We know that she misguidedly shot at Prescott after he was dead. But she did not poison him. I can prove that she did. I have the boy outside, Mrs. Tarfush, that you took into the tea shop when you changed the bottles of wine. I have the evidence of the stains on the table that show traces of the poisoned wine. Do you wish me to prove my case? Lavery? Why do you not answer him? I do not wish to, Carlo. And I do not have to. Under English law, I cannot be tried again. But, Lavery, you stand accused before your fellow countrymen. Perhaps I can clear up a slight misapprehension. It is true, is it not, Mr. Tavush, that Grosnian law does not recognize the doctrine of double jeopardy, and therefore a Grosnian could be tried twice for the same crime? Of course. It is also true, isn't it, that the Committee of Powers in The Hague has recognized that the People's Party has been all along the true government of Grosnia? That also is true, Mr. Holmes. And an embassy is extraterritorial. Acts committed there are punished by the laws of the nation whose embassy it is. You are correct, Mr. Holmes. This embassy here is Grosnian ground. So was 221B Baker Street when Mr. Priscop was murdered. Therefore, your wife committed her crime in Grosnia. 
She may still be arrested, tried, convicted, and executed by Gosnian law. Mr. Ambassador, I demand that your embassy guards arrest this murderess. Oh, well, uh... Anything interesting in this morning's post, Holmes? Yes, Watson. And um, when you come to write your story of the uh, Grosnian murderers, these three missives will provide colorful footnotes. Oh, well, what are they? The uh, first is a note from Carlo Tapush. He is resigning the embassy and entering a monastery. He says, um, I served his country but destroyed his life. Well, I'm afraid he loved that dreadful woman. What else did you get? The second is a package from the Grosnian government. Good Lord, uh, look. What is it? Oh, good Lord, it's the Platinum Cross. The Order of St. Hilarius. What's the funny-looking thing hanging from it? It looks like some strange animal. Half horse and half something else. Uh, that, my dear chap, is known as a hippogriff. A fabled beast with the head and claws of a griffin and the hoofs and tail of a horse. The Order of St. Hilarius is a high order, but St. Hilarius with hippogriff is higher still. I'm uh, very flattered. What was your third communication? A letter from my brother Mycroft. He says, uh, Thanks to your work, Grosnia has signed a British oil concession. The Empire is grateful. That's very nice, Holmes. Yes, Watson, yes, very nice. But uh, just grateful? I mean to say not even grateful with Hippogriff? Those famous million-dollar powers models you see on magazine covers always have to keep their hair shining bright with gleaming highlights. Now, here's how they do it. We glamidate our hair with Cremel shampoo. And I want to state right here and now that no other shampoo leaves the hair more sparkling clean. Really, girls, you'll be amazed how Cremel shampoo reveals all your hair's natural gleaming luster. It leaves hair shimmering with brilliant highlights that last for days. Cremel shampoo is not a cream shampoo, not a soapless shampoo, not a harsh soap, not a drying detergent. It's entirely different. After a Cremel shampoo, the hair fairly radiates natural glossy highlights. And Cremel shampoo is one shampoo you can buy which never dries or breaks the hair. In fact, it even has a built-in oil base which helps keep the hair from becoming dry or brittle. How right you are, Mr. Bell. Cremel shampoo leaves the hair so much softer, silkier, with a lovely satin smoothness. The hair holds a wave better, too. So, ladies, buy a bottle of Cremel shampoo at any drug counter. See how easy it is to have naturally lustrous hair, a vision of shining beauty. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel shampoo. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, now, let me think. Next week. Next week, for our final broadcast of the season, I think I'll tell you about one of the most gruesome adventures that we ever encountered. It took place in the famous torture chamber, now a museum, in the castle of Nuremberg in Germany. I call it The Adventure of the Iron Maiden. Tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, A Scandal in Bohemia. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of Universal International Pictures. Tom Conway through the courtesy of Eagle Lion Pictures. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom McKnight. With original music composed and conducted by Alex Steiner. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Kreml Hair Tonic and Kreml Shampoo. Inviting you to be with us next week at this same time. When Dr. Watson will tell us about the adventure of the Iron Maiden. ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.